What up, guys? My name is Chris. This is Wheelhouse Trading, and welcome to the Wheelhouse. So just when you don't expect it, boom, CPI comes down, and the market rages. Is it the pivot we've been waiting for? Is it the bottom, and we're going to jump at least until the next CPI reading? Well, the futures are up, and the day was massive. I've been in the markets a long time. I haven't seen too many days like that at least uh for a couple years and with the dow up over 1200 percent on the close and seven percent on the nasdaq it was a massive day so let's get started uh we're going to look at the indexes the dow broke the primary downtrend primary downtrend is huge to break out of that that means that we are now creating a new trend, possibly a primary uptrend. Remember, the Dow is a leading indicator and it is a barometer for the economy. It will lead us out, like I was saying in multiple videos since the bullish pivot and to hold, that it will lead us out. Uh, so let's take a look at what's going on in crypto, what happened in the stock market. Let's look at some indexes and let's look at that cpi okay here we are on the dow and you can see if i draw this in we had a previous primary uptrend okay and after covid it established it tested and in all the corrections there and there, it never broke it, it never broke it, never broke it. And then when we came to the top, we broke the primary downtrend. And then we started this new blue primary downtrend, okay, into a bear market. All right. So this entire time since the peak of the Dow, we have been in a primary downtrend. And we had our June low which if you recall was the peak of covid which made the base okay right here and then it dropped down and it went a leg lower and it double bottomed here which was inside of the base right here it was um this is the peak of covid and this was inside of the base before it broke oh. out over here i said bullish pivot and we went up and then it got real scary we came down and i said hold okay we double bottom okay because this was a market maker trick to get you to get stopped margin called and come down and do the double bottom a little bit lower and creating a lot of fear because it wasn't the june bottom low then we rallied despite how crazy it's been in the market with politics fears of inflation, and a massive crypto debacle slash scandal, right? But the Dow, as indicated, had the Jedi green lights on the daily. And like I said, when you have the Jedi green lights on the daily, you don't need to worry until it goes pink and then this one up here goes pink. And so, yeah, there's up and down in the hike in a she. However, uh, there was another institutional whale buy here. We went through one, two, three, four minor trend reversals, and now we are out of the primary downtrend, right on the Fibonacci circle. When you get past this yellow line or this purple one, that is uh, a major trend reversal. And then your last one to really, really be in a confirmed bull run is to cross this one. But crossing this one uh, gives you what's called a confirmed uptrend from a technical textbook, um, technical analysis, okay? Today, meaning Thursday, when I'm recording this, was incredibly bullish, Okay, 1,200 points on the Dow, 6%, I believe, on the NASDAQ, or on the SPY, excuse me. It'll pop up here in a minute on my TV. And over 7% on the NASDAQ? I mean, that is incredible, guys. That is incredible. There hasn't been a lot of days like that. And for it to be right on the FIB circles 
And remember, markets are forward looking and the Dow is a leading indicator. It'll lead you down first and it'll lead you out first, okay? And um, this is powerful. So because inflation has ticked down, as long as we start ticking down from here and the Fed says, mm, we're not going to do 0.75, we're going to do 0.5, markets will like that. Layoffs might, you know, slow down. Real estate might stabilize sooner than we thought. And, you know, this could be looked at by the markets as quite bullish. And this could be the beginning of the next uh, run that goes way, way higher. Uh, just like when you were in a bull run over here and you got to COVID and fell out. By the time you got to the base, this was a whole new bull run for years. Well, right now, when we get out of this one, okay, when we get out of this one right here, and the price action goes above, that starts the new bull run, okay? And so that is really, really exciting. And you can see that if I just bring this up, the Dow is now only down 9.55% from its peak. It has made major progress. Look, I stress the Dow because I know the power of the Dow. Yes, the NASDAQ, the SPY, and the Russell are important, and Bitcoin is the Dow of crypto. It's also important. They're all very important, but the Dow is the big daddy on the block, okay? It's got 30 captains of industry. They have the largest market caps. They have the most employees, um, and they are not going anywhere, and they kind of rule the world in the U.S. economy as, as the largest. The SPY has the 500 top U.S. companies. So for the Dow to be leading us out, the rest are going to follow. And when inflation comes down, big tech will surge. It'll fly. And guess what is also usually algorithmically traded to big tech? That's right. Bitcoin. And being that Bitcoin is the Dow of crypto and it's the umbrella for the alts, well, you know what time it is, baby. It's time for that bullish momentum. So let's take a look at the other indexes and let's start with the SPY. Okay, here we are on the SPY. Look at these candles. This was a crazy pattern. Um, you know, I had that four day run. It kind of did this like reverse head and shoulders coiling pattern, got bullish momentum, more fear up, down. I mean, it's been wild still under the 200, still in its primary downturn. But I just explained to you that the Dow will lead us out and the others will follow. So this is really exciting, guys. And it's been a roller coaster ride for all of us with this crypto situation. We're going to take a look at a lot of cryptos. Incredible day. When, when your whole watch list is 20 to 40% up on everything, yeah, that's the kind of day you want to be definitely in the market. So it's interesting that so much flood happened and so much fear and if you were to panic sell at the bottom, boom, look what can happen the very next day. So, yeah, really hard on us emotionally and mentally of what's going on and this crypto situation with contagion and how deep it goes. Uh, we don't know, but there are new developments and we'll cover it in this video. Um, so the spies looking good. Let's look at, uh, the NASDAQ. Okay, here we are on the NASDAQ, and the NASDAQ wick is above. Now, the body is below this. Uh, the body is still below this resistance, but like I said, big tech is going to surge with inflation coming down. It didn't come down like drastically, but any progress is good and will settle markets as markets are forward looking. So, this is good. And remember, your NASDAQ is going to be your, you know, your high tech, you know. Um, so you're going to see those Googles and Amazons and the Apples, and you're going to see the Teslas, and you're going to see all that stuff go up, even though some of those are weighted in the other indexes. The tech uh, sector, which is which is large, um, there's a lot of tech out there. Those are the fun ones to trade. Those are the fun ones to invest in. Those are the ones that get you the more high growth, whereas when you're already wealthy, you tend to kind of stick to the Dow and the mega cap. So one thing I'll tell you about a bullish market is there is no such thing as a bullish market unless the NASDAQ is happy. 
Okay, so this is positive. This is an interesting coiling pattern. Very strange pattern compared to the other indexes. So a lot of uncertainty, a lot of indecision, but look at it. It's moving, and again, it'll follow its big brother, the Dow. Let's look at the Russell, the small caps. A lot of value in these small caps. A lot of potential in these small cap investments right now. They get beaten down. The bear run started in February 2021. Wait, Chris, what do you mean the bear run started in February 2021? I thought it started in September, November 2021. No, man. The small caps go first. And when they fell in February 21 and everything else recovered in May of 21, the small caps never truly recovered. And I'll show you what I mean. This was COVID. This was the bull run of 2020. And then it was range bound. It's the only one that looks like this. It broke out and it failed. And it just never recovered from its, you know, this is basically right here, the, what I was talking about, the February through May, and it just never really recovered, whereas the other ones went up. So bear runs always start with the small caps breaking first. So the bear run started with the small caps in February 2021. So, yeah, I mean, these have been beaten down. You know, they're a little bit less expensive, high growth, more risk but they're great. And of course, we're going to spend some time on some Bitcoin. We'll come back to that. But first, real quick, let's just take a look at the inflation data for the day. Okay, so check it out. Consumer prices rose 0.4 in October. That's less than expected as inflation eases. The, the consumer price index increased 0.4 for the month and 7.7% from a year ago, both lower than analyst estimates. Excluding volatile food and energy costs, so-called core CPI increased 0.3% for the month and 6.3% on an annual basis, also lower than expectations. Prices declined for medical care services, used vehicles, and apparel, but shelter costs posted their highest monthly gain since 1990. Markets soared and treasury yields tumbled. Okay? Um, this is really good. This is what the market has been waiting for for a long time. And the reason the market went up so rapidly and soared was because everybody had been waiting for that day when inflation came down to pile in, potentially indicating a bottom of the bear or a pivot to the upside. Uh, if we were to get a second read lower in December, the market will certainly be bullish and start moving to the upside. Will there be volatility? Of course, there's always volatility in the market. But instead of more down than up, there will be more up than down. Okay, so what's going on with FTX and SBF? Well, breaking news. Bahamas Securities Regulator Freezes FTX Assets. The Bahamas Security Commission said FTX assets could not be moved without the approval of a Supreme Court appointed liquidator. Also, while Sam Bankman-Fried was out of town, his employees were trying to offload assets. He does have some people uh, that he's speaking to to try to dig himself out, but we have now learned we are looking at you know, close to a $10 billion hole in his balance sheet. He did get on Twitter and say he messed up, but I mean, a little too late, bud. Yeah, you're down eight, nine, 10 billion, but the whole crypto industry suffered because of your greed and your mistakes. Okay, over here, everything that's happened until now. So the story between cryptocurrency exchanges Binance and FTX has quickly unfolded and caused havoc in the crypto market. Here's a breakdown of where it began and where it is now. On November 10th, FTX announces it may halt trading on its platform in a few days. On November 10th, FTX US resigns from the Crypto Council for Innovation. On November 10th, Republican lawmaker claims SEC Chair Gary Gensler was coordinating with FTX to obtain regulatory monopoly. November 10th, CZ speaks with President of El Salvador confirming the country was not exposed to the FTX situation. 
November 10th, Maxine Waters warns of major consequences for users of unregulated crypto firms citing FTX. November 10th, blockchain data suggests that FTX may have resumed withdrawals. November 10th, Japan's financial regulator requests FTX Japan halt operations. November 10th, Sam Bankman Fried apologizes over FTX liquidity crisis. I effed up twice. November 10th, Sequoia Capital marks down entire $214 million stake in FTX to zero. They took a $214 million loss because of this guy. And there's a lot of people involved that are taking losses, not just them. November 9th, FTX website urges against depositing, unable to process withdrawals. November 9th, SBF reportedly tells investors he needs $8 billion in emergency funds. November 9th, crypto, sea of red. November 9th, Binance officially backs out of the agreement as a result of corporate due diligence as well as latest news reports regarding mishandled customer funds and alleged U.S. agency investigations. We have decided that we will not pursue the potential acquisition of FTX. So let's see how crypto did today. Well, if we look at our crypto bubbles, we can see that we had a big day. Right now, Maddox come down a bit, but still holding 20%. That's a good one. Chili's up 24.3%. Uh, you know, everything hit pretty darn good today. Uh, Doge 7.2, Dash 8.1. I mean, Avalanche 9%, Algo 7.4, Mana 6.8. You know, there's all kinds of them. They've come down. Even Solana got some love. And Solana notified on Twitter yesterday that it was going to halt the unstaking and restake those funds, which honestly might have sucked for some people that were looking to get out at a loss, but they might have saved you the money because Solana went up because of that choice. In addition, it maybe saved them, which is good all around. So let's take a look at some of the crypto charts today. Okay, here's Bitcoin on the daily, and it doesn't look that great right now, but I'll tell you what, uh, during the U.S. market open, this thing was raging, and it is evening time while I'm filming this. Now, if I back it up to a four hour, you can see this is the whole, uh, y you know, situation. This is when the FTX, uh, CZ on Twitter, Coindesk article came out. This is the rally when CZ uh, proposed uh, with a non-binding LOI to help FTX solve the liquidity crunch. And this is when uh, he said, hell no, this is out of control. And then uh, most likely knew that he wasn't going to take it. And whales were probably a little scared that he would find skeletons in the closet and it dumped. Okay. Bottom finders were triggering uh at this support of 16,181 the bodies all closed above it with double dojis it broke back above the 16,759 these are two mini supports and it rallied up this has gone blue if you back it up to the hour now i know it's looking a little sad at the moment and this is what you were just looking at just zoomed in you can see it's stair set up, rejected, bounced, came up, it's testing, and it, it probably jump up. Now, because of the developing stories on FTX, which is a crisis <laughs> still, um, it will stabilize the market if FTX is not able to dump uh, at a loss into the markets. Uh, it should stabilize, so that's positive. And with inflation coming down and tech loves when inflation comes down, big tech um, and crypto tends to roll with big tech in the NASDAQ, <clears throat> I think we'll be okay. Now, we do have the Jedi green lights on the hour, so that's positive, and that just happened. However, indicators for swinging show that you would have gotten out, uh, you know, over here, and you can see there was institutional whale style selling going on. Let's not worry. Remember, bottom finder went off, like I said yesterday. Broke above a mini support, tested. Broke above another mini support, it's testing, but showing more strength. 
And so that is positive. And let's just run through some of them, okay? Um, now they're going to show red because it's nighttime, but these things were up 20, 30, 40% just a few hours ago before the daily candle closed. So let's, this is Cardano. It's obviously been in a bear market like the rest of everything. Had a bottoming process, it failed, came back up, rejected twice, failed, and it's bouncing on this support, okay? Let's look at a four hour. Same thing, fell below, got some love, and is holding, but still doesn't have the Jedi green lights on the four hour, but this has gone blue, which is positive, okay? We do have the Jedi green lights on the hourly, and again, you can clear as day see it came up, it, it struggled right on support and bounced, and they might all retest their, their mini supports, okay? So that's what's going on with Cardano. And uh, again, I feel the same way. We, we're going to have to see what happens in the crypto space. Obviously, it's a little tentative. People are a little edgy, but it was a great day. And... Progress was made, and because inflation fears and and even you know potentially like a little bit softer recession or maybe a balance to the real estate, you know maybe not so much severe layoffs, uh, continued severe layoffs. You know there is some positivity that we should focus on from a technical perspective. You know prices down. We did make that lower low. But we are holding a new area of support, which is good. Let's look at Shiba. So on the daily, Shiba still has the green lights. And where it was bottoming, it's gone all the way up, rejected on the 200, fell below, but quickly bounced right back above. You can see that on the four hour. It's pretty much on the line, but again, blue. Um, and it is also retesting, but has the Jedi green lights on the hour. So we'll see where that goes. Let's look at Avalanche. Avalanche is a really good price right now at 1467. So on the hourly, again, Sam Bankman Free just destroyed the market. Bottom finder went off. This went blue, broke above its support. Jedi green lights went off. It's kind of coming down, just doing an oscillation. As long as this is green, it can oscillate all at once, as long as it's making uptrends in the oscillations. Okay, let's look at that on the four-hour low closer. You can see that's a lot of momentum. We went all the way to 11.75 and up to almost $16 in one day. That's quite a leap. Okay, and if you look at it on the daily, still looking like some pain, but our indicator is calling a false breakdown, and you can see that this is a doji. So that looks good. Let's take a look at Aave, one that's been wrecked significantly in this, in this drama. Okay. Also saying false breakdown came right down to my alert to get picked up and candles are getting smaller. And this purple looking, this color purple has got reverted back to the regular, which is positive. Plus again, that false breakdown and on the daily Jedi green lights. Let's look at a four hour, same kind of look, a lot of momentum. This came to 56.12 and it jumped to $70. It's just down a little bit at 66 right now. We'll keep an eye on it. On the one hour, same kind of look as the others. Okay. Now, let's take a look at Chili's. Chili's had an exceptional day. I mean, exceptional. Okay. From going all the way up here at 31 cents to getting plummeted by SBF to 14%. That's a 100% haircut from 30 to 15, okay? And then all the way back up from 15 to 23, and right now it's at 21. It does have the Jedi green lights, and this one has been emerging as a leader. And it, if you look at it, it's also kind of bouncing off the 200, and that is, you know, this is positive for Chili's. Now on the four hour, you can just see what I was talking about when 1429 came up to 23. And this is a lot of bullish momentum. This is now blue. The angle of that price action is outstanding. And again, Jedi green lights and trending upward, just oscillating or testing, um, which is basically these wicks right here, right across. So uh, just going to let it do its thing, you know, right there. It's just kind of 
testing that base and then it probably will oscillate and jump forward so chili's looking pretty good ethereum ethereum got knocked in the dirt down to 1062 dollars and not only that but when it when this happened it rejected perfectly on the 200 and came into the descending that really upset me after waiting 11 months for it to come all the way out and make all that progress and then this news come out very infuriating Okay, let's look at a four hour on Ethereum. And it did, like I said, came all the way down here. It went all the way to 1348 today. This is blue, which is positive. All the bottom finders are going off, which is great. And it did get above the descending pattern again. So it fell down in and then it got above. And now it's just right on the line. So we'll have to keep an eye tonight and in the morning when you see this. Okay, let's look at it on the hour, get a closer look. And there you go. This is, you know, pumping. And this is the, you know, these are hours. So this is, you know, the coin desk release of the balance sheet as well as, um, the tweet from CZ. This is when he might acquire it. This is when he said no. This is a big dump back in the descending up test. This is green. Uh, you do have some whale cells. This says false breakdown, and this color purple has reverted back to the regular, which shows that, uh, you know, we might come up. However, swing indicators, you know, say that it might, you know, have a, have a tough night, but we'll see. Volume oscillator is above the baseline still, so that's good. Let's take a look at chain link. Okay. Chainlink has the green lights indicator on the daily, again, rejected on the 200. This SBF, I'm just going to keep saying it, it's, it's very irritating that it took all this momentum and all this strength and all this potential and all this steam and air right out of our sails, right? Came down, but this is still green, which is positive. Let's look at the four hour, same kind of look, but this is, this is pink and, uh, but this is blue. So that's positive. And actually on the four hour, the indicators are saying you can get in here. Now, this is the same kind of look as the other ones. Same kind of thing. They're kind of trading together right now. Let's look at Algorand. Algorand, you know, it's basically been, it's back at this 30 cents. I mean, it's literally back at the 30 cents, but still holding the green lights on the daily. And I think with CPI coming down and tech will rally with inflation numbers coming down and we don't have another read till December 13th that it is possible it is likely with the probability that not only did we have a good day on Thursday but you know we could start to see better days ahead moving forward okay as news develops with regulators contagion mass losses lawsuits whatever else comes from it, it might rattle markets and sentiment. So we just have to kind of keep an eye on it. But if you think about it, a lot of the bad has been taken out of the market and some evasive maneuvers were made by Solana. And, you know, there's a lot of people that are in crypto that, you know, are pretty die hard and used to these types of swings and i just think with uh inflation coming down and the day that we had on thursday we could find ourselves you know right right back up into these ranges just like the stock market is showing it's just this contagion situation from this this guy now sushi i mean sushi was up it was rolling it was over here at two dollars and seven cents got knocked all the way down it's currently at dollar 16 it's showing a false breakout the colors of the candles did change let's take a closer look on that on the four hour you have a perfect bounce your hma is blue okay your lsma is looking good your fat fingers are showing it's going to continue to go up and it's kind of making that same pattern with the jedi green lights flashing green on the hourly giving some optimism that we are trending up now, we could take a deeper look into some uh, things I haven't shown you on YouTube. So even though this is green, it's showing the exchange volume is actually decreasing, which is not good. So this is something that we're going to be releasing. We're still working on it. 
But even though this is green and the oscillations, it's showing that it is getting weakness on the exchanges through the volume currently. Okay, now let's look at Dogecoin for all you Dogecoin holders. All right, big pump. I mean, this sucker went to 16 cents, got wrecked. Everything is Sam Bankman Fried's fault. <laughs> Everything's his fault. He is a bad, bad person for crypto right now. Um, cost us all a lot of headache and a lot of stress and a lot of money. I did barely did sleep for two days. So stressed out over all this. The four hour, look at all the bottom finders popping off. This thing went all the way down to 0.068. This is blue, went up, kind of retesting. Fat fingers are showing it should continue. Doge actually, I noticed, was quite resilient today. Even though everything was up, Doge was up you know it, it bounced and it helped through um a lot of the drama pretty well so kind of a similar pattern and the jedi green lights is on there maker had a big day look at maker on the hourly you can see the difference maker had a very good day swing trading settings say it's coming down but on the four hour it's showing that it's getting strength uh just having a tough four hours it looks like and you can see you got uh, your doji in a follow through day and everything is sinking on my daily chart saying it's going to go up. So Maker's looking a little stronger than some of the others. Matic. Okay, I'm big on Matic. I have a lot of Matic. Today was a great day for me in Matic because um, my buy prices were 71 and 88 cents. And quite frankly, with this bouncing off the 200 on the daily, showing a false breakdown, getting the Jedi green lights, and being a leader of the day at almost 40%, its peak was at 39 plus percent on the day. This bounce right here, I am not worried to possibly even buy more Matic. Look at the momentum, look at the price action. Okay, HMA is blue. This thing got taken down by Sam Bankman Freed, 75 cents. Oh yeah, but don't worry. He said, I effed up, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're sorry. It went all the way to a dollar fifteen from seventy-five cents. That shows a lot of strength. It's currently just down at a dollar eight, where it was for a lot of the day from one hundred eight to one hundred eleven. And on the hour, Jedi green lights, you know, popped above support, coming down, testing its two hundred on the hourly, showing a false breakdown on the hourly, meaning that this thing might be popping up here tonight. Uh, after I go to bed, Solana, you know, good for Solana, good for Solana. Look, the, the confluence filters are, uh, change colors to a regular candle. That's positive. False breakdown, flash. That's positive. Big oscillating volume on the daily. That's positive. On the four hour. Okay. Some uncertainty, not as strong. Bottom finders did go off. This thing went as low as 1188. It's showing a false break out and less strength on the four hours. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. That's the uncertainty. You can see it right in the charts. Okay. We came down, but it is failing, even though we have our Jedi green lights. But on the one hour, we're getting a false breakdown. And that happens to be exactly where the bottom finder called it. If you look at the bottom finder, our white arrows right here, it went off right there. And it's exactly where the candle wick is and the false breakdown indicator popped off. Remember all this, you know, everything is an overreaction to the upside, overreaction to the downside. Uh, but it calls them pretty accurately. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. We just got to keep an eye on things. So let's look at some of the stock winners now. Okay, Unity Software, 29.4%. Uh, on the day, let's go take a deeper look in the four hour. You can see a massive turnaround right there. Uh, this thing went down to 1829 all the way to 2859 in one day. A $10 move from, from top to finish. And it's just down a little bit right now. Bulls, one that I like a lot. We're just going to watch the hourly move quick. We got our Jedi green lights. You can see the oscillations. Bulls is, you know, Square, Adobe, Tesla, Apple, whole bunch of great um, stocks. It's an ETN and it's triple leverage. This looks great. Had a great day. FNGU, another one that I have a lot of shares of. Same looking thing. It's 10 of the best companies out there. 
and uh, Jedi green lights, and it's oscillating, looking good. Sunrun, plug, those ones did good. Upstart had a huge day. It's out of resistance, okay? We'll keep an eye. Affirm had a big day. Dropped all, all the way down to 1197, went as high as 1549, okay? We're talking about a $4 move here and finishing at 1505. Jedi green lights looking good. Shopify, 18.16. Look at these numbers, 29.4, 28.6, 27.75, 27.44, 27.2, 23.88. And to be honest in the watch list, they were at the bottom because crypto was 30, 33, 34, 35, 39. So everything was pumping, okay? Square, when I have, killed it. Boom, right off that old support. Bottoming process, but this actually goes all the way back, all the way back to here, to the peak of this bull run in 2017. Bottom at the bear market of 2018, hit a couple grinds over here in 19. This is COVID, that's 2020. This is 2021, this is the bear market. And this is where Square decided to boom, boom, rally, boom, 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 boom with the Jedi green lights and the fat finger saying it's going to roll and that false breakdown called it perfectly. Square looks ready to run on swing trader settings as well. Looking good. Gold had a good day. 15.81%. JNUG looking strong. Okay. NVIDIA, AMD. Look at NVIDIA on the daily. Jedi green lights pumping and popping, baby. Look on the hourly. Look on the hourly, guys. Boom, you can see the pivot comes down. Boom, there's the pivot. This is our, our, how we get in. Okay, we wait for this. And then we wait for the first time for it to go blue right here. So we buy in and we just, we just stay in the oscillations. We don't trip. We just stay in that Jedi green lights and let it roll. Okay. And it is looking great. Even DocuSign has been beaten down. It's down 12. X from its high, 11, 12 X, looking good. Look at AMD on the day. I have AMD and NVIDIA and well, basically most of these. So, I mean, look at this run on the day. This is insane. I mean, this thing literally was at $59. I mean, it was at $57 a couple days ago and it went all the way to $68.99, basically 69 bucks and finished right there too at all time highs. Amazon had a good day. Same kind of thing. Neo, 12%. I mean, stocks look good. Crypto looks good. Inflation's coming down. Sentiment is better. But we still have problems with SBF and this looming contagion. So we will follow that story. My name is Chris. Who loves you, baby? And welcome to the wheelhouse. Thank <music> you.